Hi there and welcome to Bustanet on another show brought to you by One Football App. This time around, we are doing another Getting Started With series and we're heading to Italy. It's AC Milan. I have to admit, when AC Milan was sold to a Chinese conglomerate in 2016, it kind of it hurt, you know. That, that whole identity that goes with Italian football. You've got the Agnelli family, you've got the Moratti family and the Berlusconi family. They're three great football patriarch families of the Serie A. And uh, it's like, you know, whenever I sit down and watch The Godfather, okay, it's like I, I imagine football having that kind of a connection as well. But now, we have an AC Milan side. And AC Milan, well, the glory days of the, seeing them lift the 2002-2003 Champions League uh, trophy at the European Cup, that's long gone. They have failed to make it to the final stages of any European competition since 2014. So it's really, really um, sad. And I was very excited when somebody asked me, can you do a getting started with Series AC Milan? And I went, oh, yeah, definitely. It's definitely on that list of clubs that I want to do, um, including Sporting Lisbon. Sporting Lisbon is also on my list. And uh, so the first thing that you'll notice when you join the club is you got a new chairman, Lee Yong Hong. So I had to get used to this, right? So I'm not really thrilled with the fact that I've got a chairman called Lee Yong Hong. But the whole goal here is to remember this great club called AC Milan. I mean, this is a club. We got Arrigo Sachi. Now, Arrigo Sachi's style of football was what we call universal, uh, universal football, in the manner of speaking, where everybody kind of like goes up attacks and comes down in defense. Uh, it is in large part the inspiration behind one of the philosophies in the game, which is very fluid. Now, on today's show, we're going to do a getting started with AC Milan, but I do not plan to replicate Arrigo Sachi's 4 4 2. Nor, there, there are no plans here to replicate uh, the great uh, ch uh, Champions League triumphs of AC Milan. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at the squad and we're going to plan to bring this club back to its glory days. Now, what are the things that we need to do in order for us to establish a foothold and de develop a plan for us to make this club? great again. So that's the goal that I have. The first thing we want to do is we want to look at uh, your philosophies. When you join the club, your philosophies are going to be none. That's fine. But over the long run, you want to think about developing players from the academy. So one of the philosophies you can ask for is uh, getting them to invest in youth. And this allows you to get the board to uh, help. You know, whenever you go to the board, then uh, you know, invest in youth training facilities or improve youth recruitment. This is going to be a plus side for you because then they are likely to make the investment for you. Now, the other thing that we want to do whenever I go into any club is a team report. Now, this is this is basic. You know, I do this with every single club. What do we have? Now, the one thing that this club has is a world-class goalkeeper in the form of Donnarumma. Donnarumma Gian, Gianluigi Donnarumma is one of the best goalkeepers in the world at his age. He's young. He's extremely... Um, he, he's only 18 years old and he has... He's the... The put, he is the next great Italian goalkeeper. Probably the best goalkeeper in the game. At the moment, he is definitely there. You know, I would, I would like, you know, do everything in my power never to sell him and keep him. Um, his personality is fairly determined. He's a wonder kid and he's definitely a first team player. So you can't really tutor him. So forget about it. Vision is nine means you're not going to be playing a kicking game with him. Like, you know, you, you, you can play him as a sweeper keeper, but I wouldn't be looking at him to launch counter attacks unless we can get this, uh, this, uh, attribute improved. Now, the other things that we want to do is we, when we go through our team, uh, the summary is okay, but what I normally like to do is I go to comparison and then I compare my team to the rest of the league. I do this for every single getting started with series. So if you've already uh, been following this very carefully, you probably know what I'm about to do. So the first thing I do is I look at my defenders, right? For my defenders, I'm looking at the first thing I look at is positioning. This is important. The second thing I look for is uh, their ability to anticipation concentration right so you've got positioning anticipation concentration anticipation pretty good uh and concentration that's not too bad 12.83 is it's not the best in the world but positioning 14 by 17 second second only to juventus now remember this is an average you always want to aim for the highest number it, the thing here but I, I get this all the time now you got best, you got worst. You don't aim for the middle, you aim for the best. Why? Because it's an average. Now, your squad can have 24 players, but only two of them are going to be on the pitch at any one time. So, if you look at your squad and you look at your defenders, so if I were to look at my defense group of players and I were to look at positioning and just look at my 
uh, two central defenders that I'm going to be using. Notice that you got 120 here and you got 117, but your average was not 20, it was not 18. It's brought down by these guys. This 12, 12, 12, 13, 14, they're bringing your average down. So, so this has to be taken into consideration whenever you're planning a strategy for your team. So we've got our positioning sorted. Now, the second thing I want to know is, okay, in terms of um, my my positioning is important for my defenders, right? But who are they positioning themselves against? They're positioning themselves against midfielders and strikers. So here, we're looking at the reverse of positioning, which would be off the ball. So here, I'm looking at off the ball, and I'm looking for mentals for uh, players who are going to be taking, uh, attacking us. So the off the ball in the land is about 14.88 and ours is 13.19. But remember that this is an average where our off, our, the, the boys, most of the players that off the ball is about 15, but our positioning between our two central defenders is very good, 2017. So it's not too bad. So we go around here, we, we try to assess, uh, things like, um, the league's, um, ability to create chances in around the box the second thing i want to do is how are my players when it comes to things like uh, handling threats in the box now handling threats in the box influences the kind of mentalities i can use because if you're losing the if you're using the lower mentalities or if you're playing without um uh, you you're playing those narrow systems you're gonna have a lot to deal you're gonna have to deal a lot with crosses right so you want to know that your boys can handle crosses in the box now jumping reach if you notice here it's not one of the best it's just above average, it's 12.67, but the best in the land is 13.22, which is like, okay, that's not too high. I mean, I've got a play in Kingstonian who's got jumping reach of 18. So this is actually not very good. You you want to make sure that um, you are better than the striker's jumping reach. Now, the strikers in the land, their jumping reach, Croton, yeah, I remember that, 15. So we know that the strikers, they can... They've got a jumping reach of 15, but my defenders need to have at least 15 or higher. So this is something that we need to we need to be aware of when it comes to handling threats in the box. So I go through all these kind of things, including finding out um, what the acceleration is for the attackers. Acceleration, fifth, Napoli's fastest is about 16. So we know that they are going to be they're speedy little devils in uh, Napoli, but the acceleration for our backline is only about 13.08. When you take a look at the AC Milan squad, um, you will find that this this team has got lots of central defenders. Um, and if you go to the team report and you take a look at the squad depth, I mean, here I've loaded some tactics up. Um, here we have, let's just try the 4 one 3 2. I'm using a formation and using the roles currently selected for the tactic. And if I look at the team itself, um, here you notice that when it comes to the defense, central defenders, you've got quite a number of central defenders who all have solid position. At least three of them, Romagnoli, um, Matteo, Musaccio, and of course, the legend Leonardo Bonucci, they all have fantastic positioning. So the natural inclination is immediate, immediately to think, why don't we go with a three-man backline? Uh, well, it would seem to be natural, right? A three-man backline. I mean, I would definitely incline towards a three-man backline. And probably for some of your matches, you might want to look at a three-man defense. But the problem is, if you wanted to play a three-man backline, they all need to be fast. So you've only got acceleration of 12 and Matteo Musaccio's acceleration of 13. That doesn't make them very fast. They're reasonably fast. Okay, Their concentration is 13. And the other central defender's concentration is 14. Um, anticipation is 16. Okay, but still, you know, they need to be fast in order for them to do what they are uh, to cover the flanks. And th this is going to be a bit of a challenge. And uh, it's a risk that you're going to take whenever you play with a three-man backline. And then if I look at the whole team, uh, these are the, the this is the backline. And then we've got, uh, when you use a three-man backline, naturally you're going to look at playing wingbacks. Now, they've got two wingbacks in the team. Uh, once once again, if you go back to the team report, it's much more easier to see it from here. So we go to the wingbacks here. They've got two wingbacks on the left. We've got Ricardo Rodriguez as well as Luca Antonelli. Now, both of them have their issues. One dives into tackles. The other one uh, tries to play his way out of trouble. Okay, that's on the left flank. On the right flank, we have another problem. We've got two wingbacks here. Conti gets forward whenever possible. Ignacio Abate 
gets forward whenever possible. So you've got two wing backs on the right flank who believe in bombing up whenever they get a chance to. But this gives us another headache. Because if you're playing with a, a three man back line, then you will notice that these, uh, your wing backs are always going to be bombing forward. So you're, you're going to depend a lot on those three central defenders to do the job that you do of uh, securing your defense. And that is a problem. The next thing we want to do is how do we control midfield? Because if you can't control midfield, you can forget trying to win the game. You're going to have to have options. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the squad. We're going to zoom in on our midfielders. And then we're going to basically see which are the players who can, who have good positioning as uh, central midfielders. We've got 15, 14, top two. Both of them not available for a really long time. Big player, two months. And Conte... Basically, we'll see you again next season. All right. Then we got Locatelli. We got Jose Mauri. Mauri, uh, 21 years old, still a long way to go. Not that fantastic. And then as you go down the list, position becomes a becomes basically a really expensive commodity for our team. Then we got Luca Antonelli. We got Frank Cassie. Um, and then um, these are options. We, we don't have very very many options. So we can, we have basically three players who can add steel. Locatelli. Um, we got Antonelli who can be moved into midfield. We've got Frank Cassie here who's got decent positioning. Um, not fantastic off the ball, but at least uh, we can depend on him defending at least, right? Uh, then we've got Montalivo who, who can string the passes. He may not be very fast, so we have to surround him. He has to play somewhere in the middle. Then we just get other, the players on the flanks and do the, uh, the, the leg work. So we got Mo the choices here are Mon Montalivo. Locatelli, as well as Frank Cassie. And if push comes to shove, we need another player there. We've got Antonelli. So we've got four. We've got our four. We've got probably uh, two or three and um, uh, one more player. So these are the players that we're going to be looking at to control midfield. While Biglia spends uh, all that time with sexy physiotherapists working on his, uh, working on getting him back to the team. We hope he doesn't take too long. Because uh, we got other players who are injured as well. Bonaventura is out as Bonaventura. This is another important player for the side out for three months. So we really have to build a team without these players for now. Um, if I'm looking at this team, Bonaventura can play in a uh, four-one-two-two-one as a playmaker on the left flank. He can also play in a four-one-three-two or a four-three-one-two as a central player that's going to punch through. Which means that um, there are three other players that are fighting for this position. That does he? he he competes with two other players for positions. So, Bonaventura's other player that he can play in that position is Hakan. Hakan is not that as good as Bonaventura. And finally, we got the one and only Suso. So, we got these three players. So, we've got, we can create a system which is a 4 1 2 2 1, a 4 3 1 2, or a 4 1 3 2. We can also use a 3 5 2, but then we won't be using Hakan, we will be using Suso and that kind of system, which is a bit of a waste. Uh, if you can't really put Suso on the pitch, you end up playing a ridiculous system, which has got Suso playing as an AM behind us, or a shadow striker behind uh, the, the the striker, which is something that they do in real life, but I, I have no plans of replicating what they do in real life. We are looking for a tactic that optimizes their position, their, their, their roles and duties in the game. That's how I am going to be approaching the game. So, please don't expect this to be a replication of how AC Milan is playing in real life. Because, uh, sometimes I like to optimize the way they're playing and this is my goal. There are plenty of systems that you can use with uh, AC Milan. You can use a 3-4-1-2, you can use a 4-1-2-3, you can use a 4-3-3 or 4 5 one you know, The list, there's about 4 or 5 systems that you can use. But against the uh, Juventus, they played a 4-2-3-1. We decided to go with what I would like to think is a 3-4-1-2. I mean, some people might argue it's a 5-2-3. I don't really care. I mean, for me, it's the number of players who are taking part in attacking transitions that is important. And this uh, totally destroyed uh, a first a first team from Juventus uh, in the first half. We scored all, all, nearly all, most of the goals in the first half. Against Liverpool, we used the, the same system again. Um... Uh, and we destroyed Liverpool here. Uh, they came, they started with their first team. Second half, they changed the players, but it was not enough um, total domination. And we've also used uh, other tactics as well. Um, basically, the way I look at it, if you 
pick up AC. The thing here is that we have to remember the AC Milan have a really, uh, they've got quite a lot of central defenders. And you can use the central defenders in uh, in the back line and chances are you'll have a Bonucci, Musaccio and Romagnoli to start with and that leaves you with uh, Gustavo. Um, I think it's Gustavo who can be a um, backup uh, central defender. You got, of course, you got Zapata as well. There. So you've got quite a number of central defenders. Then here with this this system, what we've done is uh, we have actually we are actually creating a system which soaks in and then hits it really hard with a wing back that's going to arrive late. The wing back, if you, you can. If your team can hold on, I mean, uh, if they can do enough to control midfield, this wing back is going to come in, and he's going to be a very, he's going to be a big danger. So we've got DLF on support on this side of the flank to support the wing back as he makes his move down the flank, and then we're keeping it simple with the poacher. Now there's no uh, we got the poacher on close down much more and move into channels. The DLF on support doesn't do anything, AM doesn't do anything, ball winning doesn't do anything. Uh, the uh, DLP on defense, I've got him to do close down more and dribble less. Um, keeping it simple. Uh, the wing back on support has got shoot less often, few risky passes. Wing back on defense doesn't do anything, and you've got three central defenders and a sweeper keeper that distributes centre-backs and take short kicks. Uh, in terms of team instructions, keeping it simple, we work ball, whip, play wider, push high up and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. Now, when we use this tactic, uh, generally, I'm not worried about the left flank. Uh, and I like to use Rodriguez on the left flank because Rodriguez himself is pretty decent at set pieces. So if Hakan is not playing, we got Rodriguez and Rodriguez is a good backup. And uh, in, in in for the ball winning role, I usually will use Kessi in ball, as a ball winning midfielder and Montolivo here until Biglia comes back then we can swap things around. Then we got uh, you, you have more options. As an attacking midfielder, Hakan might play here but generally I prefer Suso. Uh, Silva will play as a deep line forward and support and then you can use Kutron or Kalinic Kal Kalinic uh, niche as the uh, poacher in this system. So that's one way of playing it. What's the other way of playing it? Now, the other way of playing it is again, uh, this is slightly different again. Uh, this time we're using the wing back on the left side to create the havoc. Uh, so here, it's largely because of a certain player called Silva. I want Silva to play on the left flank, right? So the, as an inside forward, because Silva here in this 4 5 1, he's right footed. We want him to play as an inside forward. He's got decent off the ball. Finishing 16 composure 12. So he'll come, he'll arrive into the box and we expect him to create some trouble coming in late. And then we've got this wing back arriving late once more. Now, this time he's on the other side of the pitch. So he's coming this way. And uh, we got wing back. This time Abate is kept back in check. But he not remember that this guy has got gets forward whenever possible. So you got to look out for him on this flank. Uh, as the attacking playmaker here, we'll have Suso playing here. Uh, Cassie will normally be the ball-winning midfielder. Then we will... You, you can use Locatelli as the Mazzala and Montolivo in... Um, Montolivo is the DLP in most cases. And then your defenders, then you just pick your defenders, whoever you want in your back line. You've got so many in the club. Uh, Bonucci, Romagnoli, Musaccio, these are the starters. And then up top... A poacher. Why do I like the poacher? Poachers are really simple. I mean, they either go wide when they have the ball and no have no options uh, if they're on their own. They don't. They won't. They they will go. They will try and wait for other players to come, but they won't do something stupid. So as long as they go wide, if they can beat the line, they beat the line. Um, but and if there are players you know not too far away from them, they will turn around and they pass the ball back. So basically, poachers are in my definition, a team player. The moment they lay off the ball, they get into the box and that's what I like about Porsche. So, in this particular setup, we'll have a con control flexible again. Uh, here, I don't think I have any uh, PIs except for more direct, more risky passes on the DLP. Then, um, nothing here. Sweeper, keeper, you can uh, elect to give him short. No, I just left it at default. Control, flexible, play our defense. Uh, work ball into box, use also side track, prevent short goalkeeper distribution. Again, this is more about, um, it, it's the Serie A. This is not the Premiership. In the Premiership, I probably will not play out of defense. But uh, here, Serie A, we can take our own sweet time to build play up. <laughs> then we got the 4 3 1 2. Yay. This tactic completely demolished somebody in the Euro qualifiers. So we were uh, qualifying for the European Cup and uh, we used this and 4 0 at half time. <laughs> It was quite a lot of fun. Uh, this is my camping tank. In, in sense, I probably use this when I want to camp. Um, 
Again, we have this guy bombing down the flanks. You know, he's going to be coming, arriving late. So we've got ball winning midfielder, DLP. Mazala, I like Mazalas because Mazalas, if you know the role, the Mazala tends to occupy half spaces. So he acts like a inside forward or a half a winger. So this is quite good. So I can afford to keep this guy in check. So we basically have one flank attacking. And then uh, we got DLP, more direct, more risky, ball winning midfielder, Mazala, nothing special, nothing special, nothing special, nothing special, and nothing special here. Of course, you can elect to ask him to play to the central defenders. Up top, Poacher, nothing special, DLF, nothing special, AP, nothing special. So this one is, has no PPMs or PIs or whatever, you know, I just kept it this way. This control, flexible, play our defense, will ball the box, use our side track, prevent our goalkeeper disappears. Three simple tactics that we can use. Of course, there are more, but I stuck to this, these tactics. This demolished AC, uh, Juventus and Liverpool. Uh, this smashed the team that intent, uh, came to the San Siro, hoping they could camp all their players in my half, and we just, Annihilated them in the first half with four goals. And this, well, this has been doing well for us as well. It's it's a fun system to use because it's, it gives... Look, I want both of both them to get forward, right? So I want to give them a chance, you know, in different games. Okay, Rodriguez, now it's your turn. <laughs> but, you know, it's your turn. It's the same team. So essentially, I could call this a super system for them. They could, they, they could you know, switch between all the systems and they could have all three systems and they can use them and they can rotate to their heart's content. We can have Suso playing. We can have Hakan playing. No problems. All of them can play in the system and I'll be a happy camper. So far, the club has done well. We've uh, had some really, re we, we had a really good result against Juventus in pre-season, beat Liverpool comfortably. Then uh, Lada, Blola, whatever this club is called, 4-0 within the first 35, uh, yeah, 40, first half, we scored four goals and uh, we sealed that match. So far, so good, right? So, uh, I think this is one of the better ways for you to use the AC Milan team. And, uh, so many tactics that you can use with AC Milan. I can't wait uh, to find out how you guys get along with your AC Milan saves. Let me know. Uh, once again, I'd like to thank all my patrons that continue to support this channel. If you have any questions, please look me up on Twitter at Bastanet or addicted to fm.com, my website. You guys take care, have a good one, and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.